You ever notice how everything, and I mean everything, seems to be made in China these days? It didn't happen overnight, but it sure feels like it, doesn't it? How did China's industry get so good so fast and leave everyone else struggling to keep up? Let's break this down because, trust me, this story is more interesting and more important than you might think. So how did China rise to dominate the world's manufacturing and production sectors with such blinding speed? To understand this, we need to rewind a little and look at a few key moments and factors that supercharged this rapid industrial growth. First off, let's talk about Deng Xiaoping. You might not know his name, but he is basically the guy who flipped the switch on China's industrial revolution. Back in the late 1970s, China was just coming out of the Cultural Revolution, a period of chaos, economic stagnation, and frankly, backwardness in a global sense. When Deng took the reins, he made a crucial decision. He opened up China's economy. The policy was simple but revolutionary. Let some people get rich first. That's how Deng justified the shift from strict communism to what he called socialism with Chinese characteristics. In other words, the country would remain politically communist but start embracing capitalist economic practices. China started allowing foreign companies to invest in the country and set up factories. Special economic zones were created in places like Shenzhen, which were basically like experimental zones for capitalism. This was the first major step towards China becoming the world's factory. But here's the kicker. China wasn't just inviting foreign businesses to make stuff there, they were watching very closely. They soaked up all the know-how, the technology, the management systems, and soon Chinese companies were ready to take over and outcompete the very foreign firms they had learned from. Now I know what you are thinking. China got ahead because labor was cheap. Yeah, that's a big part of the story, but it's not the whole story. In the 1980s and 1990s, China had a massive surplus of labor. Millions of people from rural areas were flocking to cities in search of work. And Chinese workers were willing to do long hours for relatively low pay, especially by Western standards. This labor cost advantage was irresistible to global companies. They started outsourcing everything to China. Textiles, electronics, toys, you name it. But it wasn't just that labor was cheap, it was also very efficient. Chinese workers weren't just punching the clock, they were hungry hungry to lift themselves out of poverty to make a better life for their families. That's a kind of motivation that's hard to put a price tag on. So here is where it gets really interesting. Unlike many Western countries that operate under pure market economies, China never let go of state control entirely. The government had a huge hand in shaping industrial policy. They didn't just open up the economy and then sit back. They kept a very active role in steering industries towards strategic goals. For instance, the government would literally select the industries they wanted to dominate globally, like steel production, shipbuilding, electronics, and funnel state resources into those sectors. They'd give out massive loans, subsidies, and tax breaks to these industries, making it easier for Chinese companies to grow, scale, and compete on the international stage. Now, some people might call that unfair competition, but let's be real. If it works, it works. China wasn't playing by the rules of pure capitalism. They were playing to win. Okay, here's a part of the story that doesn't get enough attention. Technology transfer. In simple terms, this is how China accelerated their industrial prowess by, well, borrowing ideas. When foreign companies wanted to access the Chinese market, especially in the 1990s and 2000s, the Chinese government would often require them to enter into joint ventures with local firms. These partnerships weren't just about sharing profits, they were about sharing technology. You see where this is going? Chinese companies gained access to cutting-edge technologies from countries like the US, Germany, and Japan. This allowed them to catch up very quickly, especially in industries like electronics, automotive, and telecommunications. But China didn't just copy, they improved. They took the tech, and then they added their own twist to it, often making it better or cheaper. This rapid tech absorption gave Chinese companies an edge they didn't have before. There is a saying, if you build it, they will come. China took that very seriously. They poured billions into infrastructure, highways, railways, ports, airports, and power plants. The speed and scale at which China built up 
its infrastructure is honestly mind blowing think about it if you are a company looking to build a factory you need to know that you can get raw materials in and ship finished products out quickly china made sure their logistics network was world class in many cases it's better than what you will find in the us or europe this infrastructure boom wasn't just about creating jobs it was about making sure that industries could grow as fast as possible if a company needed a new port terminal to handle exports the government would make sure it happened fast once china's industries started growing the hit point where they could produce at an enormous scale and here's the thing about scale the bigger you get the cheaper it becomes to produce each individual unit this is known as economies of scale and china mastered for example when it comes to making electronics like smartphones chinese factories can pump out millions of units at a time and because they are doing it on such a massive scale the cost per unit drops dramatically that's why you can buy a high tech gadget for a fraction of what it would cost to make in say the us china's ability to produce at such scale gave them a huge pricing advantage on the global market it's why so many products became cheaper over time and why competitors found it nearly impossible to keep up this brings us to the supply chain if china is the world's factory the supply chain is its life blood over the past few decades china has built the most integrated and efficient supply chain system on the planet when you make something in china everything you need is right there factories for raw materials sub components assembly packaging and even shipping logistics the whole process is seamless this isn't something you can just replicate in another country overnight because of this supply chain dominance even if companies wanted to move production out of china they would have a tough time doing it the infrastructure expertise and ecosystem just don't exist anywhere else at the same scale it's not just about labor costs anymore it's about the entire manufacturing ecosystem china has built now here is where the story takes a turn for years people said china was great at making stuff cheaply but they weren't innovating they were just copying but today that narrative is changing fast chinese companies are no longer just copying western technology they're creating their own in industries like electric vehicles telecommunications and ai china is now leading the charge they have invested heavily in research and development and the results are starting to show remember how china got ahead by mastering economies of scale and efficient production well now they are applying those same principles to high tech industries they are scaling innovation producing high tech goods at prices that western companies can't match so how did chinese industry get too good too fast it's a mix of factors smart government policies cheap but motivated labor technology transfers massive infrastructure investments supply chain dominance and now even innovation but here's the thing it didn't happen by accident every step of the way china had a plan and now they are reaping the rewards while the rest of the world is left asking how do we compete that's a question we'll have to answer sooner rather than later because china is not slowing down if you want to know how ireland became the world's third richest country rising from the ashes i mean it was literally a dead country in history but now it is the most beautiful and richest country on planet earth then you should watch the video currently displayed on your screen goodbye and i'll see you next time and bundle of thanks for watching